Hello. So in this activity, we are asked to find the output for an LTI system where the input is a complex exponential signal. By the way, I just noticed there's a typo here. There's a J missing. And so let's do that. Um, what we have is if we do the, a complex exponential, J omega zero T of a particular frequency and phase, uh, and here we have an amplitude, notice that I can bring uh, the phase out. So that's equivalent to this that you have here. You put that at the input. The system is LTI. I and mean, when we already did this in a previous video, what is the output? Well, it's an exponential. Exponential are the eigenfunctions, so we should get a e to the j omega zero t plus phase. And what is the system going to do? Well, it's going to be the frequency response evaluated at a frequency. And if you do a sum of this, a sum of, in this case, I'm going to represent it as AK coefficients, including the amplitude and the phase, e to the j omega zero t, not omega zero, it's not just one. I could do omega zero and make them harmonically related. I could do this zero, so that's the fundamental frequency, and then k, k from minus infinity to infinity. This is x of t. t. This will be a Fourier, a Fourier series expansion, or I can just say, well, and this will work for periodic signals. I'm going to do for any signal that has a line spectra. So I'm just saying omega k, they don't even have to be harmonically related. What the output is going to be through an LTI system? It's linear, so it's going to be the sum from k from minus infinity to infinity. Whatever you put at the input, you're going to get at the output, exponentials, sinusoids, and eigenfunctions. They go through the, the LTI system unaffected, and that's why all these linear operations that you apply to the exponential, you get an exponential line. You, you do the derivative of exponential, you get an exponential out within a scaling factor. You do the integral of an exponential, you get exponential out. You do uh, <clears throat> exponential signal through any of these filters, you get an exponential signal out. It may be attenuated, it may be phase shifted, but that's it. And well, what will this be? H of J omega, at, you have to evaluate that each omega k that you have here. So, and you multiply each one of them. So let's show that this is easy enough to find the output for any input, you convolve it. In a way, we already solved this in a previous video, right? And so this is, you can also do this, convolve with h of t. The convolution operator denotes the convolution integral, which equals what I'm just going to show you here. The integral from minus infinity to infinity to this h of tau times x of t minus tau d tau, right? So all I have to do is put my x of t. In this case, the activity asks for that one. So h of tau a e to the j theta e to the j omega t minus tau v tau. And this is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity, h of tau. Notice I'm going to partition this and um, I'm going to group all the terms where you have a tau there because that's the integration. So we have here one, right? e to the j omega this minus tau, which I'm bringing e to the minus j omega tau, v tau, and I'm able to do this. Again, why? Because this is independent of tau, so a to the j omega, zero, and the other one is also independent of tau, e to the j omega t. And so, notice, 
This was my input. An exponential of a given frequency. I get, sorry, if I put an omega zero at the input here, well, let's evaluate it for all omegas, right? I'm going to get my output the same. Sinusoid of the input, you get sinusoid of the output. If I were to put it at a particular frequency, I will get a zero here and a zero there. I'm meaning, in that case, I'm evaluating the frequency response at that frequency. So this is what we got. Sinusoid of the input, same sinusoid of the output of the same frequency, and then the frequency response evaluated at that frequency. If we do it independently of frequency, what we can find is that the frequency response here, this is given by the Fourier transform of the impulse response. I'm doing it now as a function of t. Could be tau. If I were to apply this in, I could also do it for a sum of complex exponentials, right? This will be y of t equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity, h of t. And this is my input. Now my input, what is my input? The sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity, a k e to the j omega k t minus tau, because we have to evaluate it at t minus tau when we're doing the convolution integral, d tau, right? And so this is really the, the same thing. <coughs> Integrals and smatteries are linear operators, so we are going to uh, work this out. Let me just minimize this space one sec. Just do it down here so that we still can refer to what we have already solved. And this will be the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of, let's partition this. This is going to be h of tau times e to the minus j omega k tau, I have picked e to the j omega k minus tau, that's what we have there, with the integral, so let me give me some more space here, sum k minus infinity to infinity, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, v tau times a k times this other exponential that we have here, e to the j omega k t. Okay, so let's see what we have. We put a sinusoid in, oops, sinusoid in, we get a sinusoid out, same sinusoid on the same frequency, and the frequency response evaluated at that frequency. We put a sum of sinusoids in, we get a sum of sinusoids out, same sinusoid, notice, but now each sinusoid at that frequency is going to be multiplied times the frequency response evaluated at that frequency. So notice, this is what we plug in, the sum of sinusoids for our x of t here, we get the sum of sinusoids out of the same frequencies, and then we have here the Fourier transform of the impulse response evaluated at those frequencies. This is the 
h of j omega. So we have shown that results, we have generalized it. Now in the next activity, we are just going to go ahead and solve the impulse response of a complex exponential signal. Actually, I'm going to leave this as a homework. And, and there is a typo here, let me just, this is x of t equals 10 e to the j 3 pi t. Actually, let's quickly do it, at least part of it. x of t equals 4 e to the minus 4 t u of t. This is the system for which we already found. Oh, sorry, I'm making a mistake here. We have a system, this is h of t, this is the impulse response of the system, e to the minus 4 t u of t. We already found the frequency response of the system, right? In a previous video, j omega was 4, 4 plus j omega, for which you could find the magnitude of the phase, or for any frequency that you evaluate, it gives you, in polar form, the magnitude of the phase. So that's the system. All we need to know about the system is that that's the impulse response, meaning when I put a delta at the input, I get that at the output. I get 4 e to the minus 4 t u of t. That's the impulse response. I want to know, you don't know anything else about the system. Maybe you took it to the lab, you put a delta, you got that out, you don't have it any longer, and I'm asking you, well, what is the system going to do for a signal that is 10 e to the j3 pi t? How do you find it? Well, simple enough, right? We have a, <laughs> an output. Our output is going to be, this is a sinusoid, complex exponential. So you should know, if anything else, you should say, well, the system, at least is going to, the form of the sinusoid is going to stay, sinusoid in, sinusoid out. What is going to change? Not the form, sinusoid in, sinusoid out, of the same frequency, 3 pi in, 3 pi out. Notice, so this is the form, form stays the same. This is the frequency, same frequency. Why? Because it's LTI. And the exponentials? are the eigenfunctions of LTI system, meaning they are immune to the effect of the system. Well, that amplitude, though, is going to change. By what? The frequency response of the system. How do you calculate it? Well, let's evaluate at the frequency that you... So this is h of j omega. Now, this allows you to see how the system will do it for any sinusoid. Not just this at 3 pi, anyone, you just plug here at omega, omega equals 3 pi. So you go ahead and you say h of j omega evaluated for omega equals 3 pi is equal to 4, 4 plus j omega evaluated at omega equals 3 pi, which is 4, 4 plus j 3 pi, right there. And that's a number that has an amplitude and a phase. That amplitude, you multiply times the amplitude, the phase, you put it in the phase, right there. You could also work it out. You could say, well, what is the magnitude of that? Well, it's going to be 4 divided by square root of 4 squared, 16, plus omega squared, this is 3 pi squared, so that's the amplitude and the phase. You also know how to find it. So y of t is going to be equal to, and just going to just work it out yourself, it's homework, is the system 16 plus 3 pi at that frequency evaluated times the original amplitude times e to the j 3 pi minus, and what is the phase? It's going to be the arctangent of what? The y, this is 3 pi over the x-axis, which is 4. 
Let's work it out. So again, we know the impulse response. With the impulse response, can we find the stability? Yes. Integral from minus infinity to infinity, absolute value of the impulse response, less than zero, stable. Can we determine causality? Yes, if the impulse response is zero for t less than zero, causal. Can we find the frequency response? Yes, the frequency response is the Fourier transform of the impulse response. We did it for the system, we have the frequency response. We know how the system is going to respond as a function of frequency, you can plot it. And for positive frequencies, Something that's going to be something like that, a low pass filter. So we are able to find the frequency response. Can we find the output for any other input? Yes, in general, you need to use convolution, but if it's a sinusoid, you don't even need to do, do that because you have the frequency response. And so sinusoidal inputs like this one are going to give you a sinusoidal output multiplied times the frequency response evaluated at that frequency, and that's what we have here. Sinusoid input. I get the same form, sinusoid, j, the same frequency, 3 pi, same original amplitude, but then that amplitude is going to be multiplied times the magnitude or your frequency response evaluated at a particular frequency is what we have here. 3 pi, 3 pi, and then also a phase shift. You have here a phase shift that is dependent on that frequency. So we didn't even have to use convolution. Now for an arbitrary input, if I gave you that simple response, find what the output is for something that is, I don't know, a square signal like that or a triangular signal. Well, to come up with an analytical solution, you will use convolution. In general, practically, because we can decompose a signal into a sum of sinusoids, either a discrete sum or an infinite sum, even these ones will be an infinite sum, uh, this is really useful because, because it tells you what the system is going to do to the signal. So you know the frequency content of the input, we're going to see that the output in the frequency domain is just going to be the multiplication <coughs> of the of your frequency response time the spectrum of the input. And so we are using what we learned last week of the spectrum of your signal. You compute the, the Fourier transform in this, in this case because the system is continuous, the continuous time Fourier transform of the input you multiply times the frequency response, the Fourier transform of the impulse response, and you get the output. What will be the frequency content of the output signal, which you can also then take back to y of t by doing the inverse Fourier transform. Thank you.